Right, this is 8.1.7 nuclear fission. So we previously talked about fission before and how it's a process where a larger parent nuclei splits apart and forms two smaller daughter nuclei. It might also release some neutrons and as a result it releases some energy because of that binding energy. Yeah? We talked about how when you're doing fission going from heavier elements to a lighter element, the masses before and the masses after are not equal to each other and that defect in mass is what releases energy. Okay? So today we're going to talk about induced fission which is how you make fission happen by introducing some neutrons. So this is what would happen in a nuclear reactor. So first we need neutrons to be captured by the nuclei. Once they're captured by the nuclei then the fission process begins. Now common misconception is that the nuclei are bombarded with neutrons. But actually, if you think about it, if you had a nucleus and you start throwing stuff at it, what are the chances of hitting it? Quite low. Yeah, because the, neutron is, the nucleus is very, very small. So if you're just firing particles towards something very, very small, chances of you hitting it are very, very low. So what you do instead is you send the neutrons at a slow speed. So slow neutrons. Yeah, we also call these thermal neutrons. So they move quite slowly, and if they happen to get close enough to a nucleus, they get swallowed up. Okay? So, slow neutrons are captured by uranium nuclei. Which then splits into two daughter nuclei plus some neutrons. So sometimes this releases three neutrons, sometimes it releases two neutrons. On average it's two and a half neutrons. For our purposes we're going to just use three neutrons for simplicity. So, slow neutrons are also called thermal neutrons. And the two daughter nuclei, they're roughly equal in size, but that doesn't mean they're exactly equal. Now, when I say the word roughly, that still has a big difference, right? What I'm saying is, if we, we could have something that's got like a nuclear number of 80 or 90 and 100 and something, that's roughly equal. Yes, there's still quite a, a large difference between them, but what we're not talking about is something that's got a nuclear number of 100 and something and the other one a nuclear number of like 5 or 6, yeah? So we're not talking about two different extremes. They should be close enough together that you can consider them sort of medium-sized or medium-heavy nuclei. Yeah? So we'll do an example of a reaction. So we've got uranium-92235 plus a neutron. That turns into barium. That's 144. And I'm going to need you guys to help me with this and make sure that the numbers add up. Otherwise, we're going to have to change some stuff. Plus krypton, which is 88 and 36. Plus three lots of neutrons. Plus some energy. So 
very quickly. Can you add up all the top numbers and see if they add up and the bottom numbers as well? Let me know if they do, let me know if they don't. So that's 235 plus 1, that should be 236. Uh, the, the numbers on the right add up only 235. One less. Yeah. Is it less? One less. One less. Okay. Um, 42, We've missed the neutron off one of these. So this one might be 89, for example. Do the proton numbers work? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah? Okay, that's fine. So that's probably 89, yeah? Okay. So those three neutrons that are now released, they now move on to find another uranium nuclei and start this process again. Then each one of those reactions produce another further three nu uh, neutrons, which then move on to another uranium nuclei and start the same process again. So that creates something called a chain reaction. And the chain reaction releases more energy the further it goes. So we'll draw a diagram representing this. So here we've got a neutron. Our neutron finds its uranium. So here's uranium-235. The uranium then splits and it turns into barium and krypton. So there's our barium which is 144, and then we've got krypton, which was 89, and then that also releases three neutrons. So it's neutron, 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 and energy is released over here as E. At the start, We say that it's the zero of reaction, so n equals to zero. In the next reaction, we've got n equals to one, and then so on. So the next reaction after that will be n equals two, n equals three, etc. So each of these neutrons then find a uranium 235. It is uranium. But does it have to it be? It has to be. This is, this is exponential. It is exponential, yeah. So each of these uranium, they split off into barium and krypton. Plus your free neutrons. So there's your barium. Krypton, and you can see that it starts to get rather messy very quickly. So, from the first reaction to the next one, so from the zero to the first, n equals one, we had that splitting of uranium happen three times as much. Which basically means if we have the same amount of energy released each time, the amount of energy now is three times E. And we can start drawing this further, but it's going to get even more messy. But you can also imagine that if you carried on, each one of these uh, neutrons then finds one uranium each. So now after this you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine uraniums which will follow the same reaction. 
And if the same reaction happens nine times when n equals to two, then you're going to get 9e for the next iteration. So it's going up as 3 to the power of n. So the energy increases as 3e is equal to 3 to the power of n times by e naught. Where e naught is the energy released from one uranium undergoing fission. So here you've got two options. Allow the chain reaction to continue, in which case you've got a nuclear warhead and it explodes. Or you have to control the chain reaction. If you control the chain reaction, you want one reaction to not increase exponentially and you want one of the reactions to lead to one more reaction rather than to three more. Yeah? So if chain reaction is not controlled or stopped, is not controlled or stopped, you have a nuclear weapon. Releases massive amounts of energy. Now, for that to happen, you have to have something called the critical mass of uranium. As long as you have that much mass, as soon as one neutron happens to find its way, and there are random neutrons just floating around in the air, stray neutrons that just happen to find its way to this uranium, that will set it off, and you have a nuclear explosion. So in a nuclear warhead, they'll have two pieces of uranium, one on either side of the warhead. When the trigger starts, it shoots one piece towards the other. The piece strikes the second piece at a high enough velocity such that they basically become one. At that point, they're at critical mass, so it goes boom. And that's all a nuclear warhead does. So this is provided that you have... You have the critical mass of uranium. So this is for chain reaction. So we're going to talk a little bit about a nuclear reactor now and how that's different from a nuclear weapon. So we start a new page. Nuclear reactor. So in a nuclear reactor, we start with a moderator. The moderator often is made from water. And the purpose of a moderator is to slow down neutrons. And towards the end, we're going to talk about how it actually slows down neutrons. So the moderator, which is made from water, in a nuclear reactor, slows down neutrons. To thermal speeds.
Then you've got control rods. The control rods absorb excess neutrons, such as to keep only one neutron being left behind after each fission reaction. So these absorb neutrons. to keep the reaction factor to just over 1.0, not 3.0. And the control rods, they adjust. They can go up and down the reactor to absorb more neutrons or absorb less neutrons. Yeah, so if, you're, if your reactions are slowing down and your energy output is a bit low, you can release the control rods a bit so you, you bring them higher so they're not as deep into the reactor. Therefore, they're absorbing less neutrons. If the reaction starts to get too fast and starts to produce too much energy, then you can lower the control rods into the reactor. They start absorbing more neutrons and you slow down your reactions and you release less energy. In the event of an emergency, the automatic systems will drop all the control rods straight into the reactor. They'll absorb all available neutrons and stop the reaction in its tracks. Yeah? After that's happened, all you need to then contend with in a state of emergency is how do you cool down the reactor? Because the reactor still needs to be cooled down because it will be very, very hot. So the emergency situations basically means that something has failed. And most of the time, that would be that the cooling system has failed or the cooling system has a leak, for example, in the event of um, an earthquake or a nat other natural disaster. So we've got the coolant. These cool down the fuel rods. to prevent meltdown. So if you didn't have any coolant, then the fuel rods will become so hot that they'll end up basically just melting through the reactor. And then you've got basically this molten, hot radioactive stuff just melting through the ground. Yeah? And then that way they're going to contaminate everything in their surroundings. And that's exactly what happened in uh, Chernobyl. So the nuclear reactor actually melted and it melted into the ground. And right now they've encased it in thick layers of concrete. But that area became uninhabitable. Everyone had to leave. Your control rods are made of boron, cadmium, or silver. Okay, and the last thing is how water actually behaves as a moderator. So it's moderation by elastic collision. So we'll do our usual before and after diagrams. So we start with our neutron in water, which is moving rather quickly. It collides with a hydrogen atom in water, which is not moving very quickly. At the point of collision, it's an elastic collision. So some of this momentum is transferred to that hydrogen atom, which means that our neutron has lost some momentum. 
So our hydrogen atom moves one way and our neutron moves another way. And the neutron has lost some momentum. as it was transferred to H atom during collision. So now the neutron has slowed down to thermal speeds. And that's the end of 8.1.7.